We're here to talk about playing with rocks. These are big rocks. So we're going to make this together, but you'll never find any two rocks the same, so it makes every picture different. the talent for drawing pictures because I have to create the shapes but I do have the talent for finding shapes in nature and then putting those together and I'd love for you to do it too I'll show you how I did it and you can do it your own way okay follow me okay we're going to do the washing of the feet that Jesus did at the Last Supper and I just wanted to show you some of the rocks before we get started when I go hiking and I'm outside, whenever I see a long, skinny rock, I keep it. And especially if it's got any kind of markings on it or texture, it's always so interesting to do that. You'll also see in some cases I've got a dark mark. I use sticky putty. This stuff, it's called tack, and it's a reusable adhesive. And so I can just ball it up and stick it on here and then stick it on a board and it will stay with the sticky putty on it. So, um, but it leaves a residue, a little, what is that? It leaves a little oil stain behind. So that's okay if it's on the backside, but sometimes it gets on the front, but that's what that is. So we have long skinny rocks, which are great. And then if the rocks have a curve to them, that's even better because natural things, people and plants and animals have curves and have weird little textures and indents. So it's just wonderful when you find an imperfect rock is perfect, just like people. When we're imperfect, we're different and unique and that's all great. Here's a fun round rock. I love this rock because it's got, it's got imperfections and they're, the more imperfect they are, the better. It's very round. So you could say it's r perfectly round almost. That's kind of a problem because there's not a lot of things in real life that are perfectly round unless they're manufactured or created. So if you're making a car or a bicycle, that's fantastic. But we're making people. So that's interesting. Here's a long skinny rock. Of course I collected it because as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, I want to keep that. Had no idea what this would be. And it does look rather broken, doesn't it? And I usually like to get rocks that have been tumbled and are softer on the edges, but this was just so unique, I had to keep it. Didn't know why at the time. Another tall skinny with a curve. This one's really long and skinny. Love that. Makes a nice foundation that you can put somebody on is what I was thinking at the time, but we used it for something else. And this, how unusual is this one? Had no idea, is that like a bird pecking? No idea what that was, but when they're unusual, I keep them. And square rocks are not I only use them for like tables and desks and chairs and I don't know, I haven't found a lot of uses for square yet, but triangular rocks. I know it's not a perfect triangle, but you can kind of see three points. One, two, three. Keep the triangles. They're infinitely useful. They're especially great as angel wings. So to make an angel, so easy. You just get a tall skinny rock, long skinny, and you stick that on there and give them a head you got an angel. Isn't that the cutest angel? <laughs> They're so easy to make. Three rocks, a triangle, a tall one, a circle. Easy. And then if you were going to get really creative, you could put a little foot on it. A little foot down here so you can see. A little foot. Cute. Okay. So that's what you need to look for. Long skinny. And really when you're outside, you're going to find smaller rocks like these guys. And this is what I started with were just little pebbles. And if you, you'll find long skinny pebbles, collect those, 
kind of circular are very helpful. Okay, and when I get to rivers and streams, sometimes they have big rocks like these, and that's what I prefer working with now that I've played with so many rocks. So let's make the scene of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. So we're not doing angels. There's another beautiful angel wing right there. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? It's a triangle, one, two, three. I'm Okay, there's another, there's lots of points, but it kind of looks like a triangle. That's what you're looking for. But we're not gonna do angels today, although I want you to see what a beautiful angel that would be. And I'm always doing angels on profile. If you're working with little kids, they will not like the profile. They wanna see it straight on. And when you see an angel straight on, he's got two wings and his head's up there. So just know that it's, it's hard for them to conceptualize at first a profile, but when you're making scenes, it's a lot easier to do a profile. So we're not gonna do angels, so I'm gonna pull the wings aside. But we do need a person. This will be the disciple of Jesus with his head. Nice. Notice all how un it's not perfectly round. There's all these shapes. It's so perfect because when there's lots of angles and stuff, you can make them look sad or contemplative. You can make them turn it around and make the point on top and now he's alert and excited. You know, they're just the ways you turn it make all the difference. So play with your rocks, lots of playing. And then like we did, we could have a foot if we wanted to. Okay, so there's a disciple and Jesus comes along and says, I'm going to wash your feet, which was a very unusual thing for a leader to do because they only let the servants and the poor people wash each, wash the feet. It was kind of a thing that people who didn't have much money would do to make some money, maybe. But Jesus was a servant of all, and so he decided to show his disciples how important it is to serve each other. He washed their feet. And you might notice that this head is pretty big for that body, if that's gonna be Jesus bending over. And again, notice this really interesting rock. It's got a curve too, it's got lots of texture. Those are my favorite kind. But that's too big. So how about this rock instead? It's almost the same, but it's just smaller enough to really work well. And then what way do you make the face? Do you make the face on the flat side? Or do you turn it around and make the head on the flat side? Can you see both work? You can't make a mistake doing this. You just play with it till it's the way you want it to be. Okay, and then how about if Jesus had some feet and legs, that'd be cool, huh? Let's have him kneeling down. And so he's kneeling and he brought his bucket of water so he could wash his friend's feet. Well, his friend's standing up, it's hard to wash somebody's feet standing up, so let's have him sit down. And what is he gonna sit on? Well, we got our square rock. This is a great rock for him to sit on. How about that? But it doesn't look much like a chair, it's kind of big. So maybe we got the wrong one. Let's try a different long skinny rock. We'll put this one aside. Look at this beautiful long skinny rock. I thought it was maybe a cloud, or maybe it was a little mountain, or something to sit on. But when I turned it sideways, I realized it was a person. Look at that. And if I give him a chair that fits the angle of that rock, oh, it fits so well. When you can get two rocks to fit, that's like magic. And got his head up here, and his basin of water. He needs a foot. There's a foot. This is the foot I used in the book, He is Risen. Rocks tell the story of Easter. But I found a better foot just the other day. I was out hiking. Isn't that nice? It's so roundish. That's what water and wind and all the elements, they push the rocks around and they get really pretty and soft. It's kind of like our lives. We get pushed around a little bit and hard things happen and we get buffeted and chips knocked off. God can make us beautiful. So he takes all those hard things that happen and he makes us beautiful. Hard to imagine, only God could do that, but he does. He promises to do that with everything hard that happens. So there you go, there's Jesus washing the feet and we just need an arm for Jesus. How about this one? Do you like that? Kind of weird. Let's turn it over and see if it does any better this way. Hey, I like it better that way. And then do you stick his arm away up here? Well, that could work, especially if he was really leaning out. I'm gonna 
put it down lower. What do you think? Do you like that? You might like something different. So you put your rocks where you want because only you know. And I really wish he was closer to the feet that he's washing. What if we could move this down? And in real life, everything's not on one straight line. And so there's depth. So he might be sitting a little farther back. And so it's okay if your foundation has something in front and something in back and that makes it look a little more dimensional. So what do you think? Is that the right thing to do? That's what, oh, Jesus' head got lost. <laughs> Let's put it back on. And he's looking down because he's doing this great service. And he isn't all proud looking up. He's looking down going, wow, look at that. The, uh, the God of earth and heaven is washing my feet. He was astounded. And actually, Peter, if you remember in the story, he didn't want Jesus to wash his feet because he was embarrassed. He's like, no, I don't let somebody great like you bend down and wash my feet. And Jesus said, hey, Peter, this is what the kingdom of God is all about, serving each other. And if you don't let me serve you, you have no part in the kingdom. And Peter said, well, then wash my whole body. <laughs> Peter was so fun. He had such a great personality. He was always questioning and thinking. had such strong ideas. And then Jesus would teach him, and he would be humble, and he'd learn and listen. Peter was a great man. And isn't it great that Jesus would choose people with imperfections and weaknesses to be his friends? And that's me. I've got my weaknesses. You might have some of yours. And Jesus loves us and helps us. You know, he focuses on our virtues. A virtue is like the good things about us. That's what Jesus focuses on is our virtues, not our weaknesses. And then when we love ourselves and we know that we have value and we have virtues, then our weaknesses are okay. And we can just be humble about it and say, well, I'm trying. It's the best I can do for now. And that's good enough when we rely on Jesus. So there you go. What do you think? Does it look like somebody washing his feet? I think so. You can see this picture in my book called He is Risen. Rocks tell the story of Easter. This just came out in 2019. And I love it because it's just rocks from outside. No rocks were changed. It was just ones I found and picked up when I went hiking throughout the Pacific Northwest. So that I wanted you to see that picture. And I hope that you will go make it. You might be interested to know that the first time I even thought of Jesus washing somebody's feet in rocks was when a 10-year-old named Ben sent me his picture. And he had done it first. And I loved his picture so much. And I thought, well, I want to try. And my picture turned out totally different than Ben's. And your picture will look totally different because there's no rocks that are the same and there's not another you in the world to create it. So I'd love to see what you make. You can post it on my Facebook page, Patty Rokus Artist. Um, and then I could see it. Or you can just tag me, Patty Rokus, on Instagram or Facebook. Or you can even go to my website, Rocks Tell Stories, and see more of these videos. And I'd love to see yours. Okay, just remember, God loves you, and it seems like when we go out in nature and we really notice the things that God made and touch them and hold them and hear the sounds they make, there's something very peaceful and calming about that, and it brings me a lot of joy. And I bet it brings you a lot of happiness, too. Okay, share with your friends, and everybody go make some rock art. Let's see what you make. Thanks for joining me. Okay, this is blue. This is blue. Say hi, blue. Hi, I'm a Muppet. <laughs> he's more like a, he's like a stuffed animal that came to life. I think he's a poodle mix something. And anyway, he's the cutest dog ever. But we're here to talk about some, about playing with rocks. And I thought it'd be really neat if we did a scene from the Bible of the time at the Last Supper when Jesus washed the feet 
of the disciples. Do you remember that story? Well, we're going to create that in rocks, and I'd love for you to do it too. I'll show you how I did it, and you can do it your own way. Actually, I got the inspiration to do this scene from a 10-year-old boy named Ben who sent me a picture of the Last Supper and Jesus washing the feet of the disciples, and I thought it was so brilliant. And that's the neat thing about rocks is that no two rock art pieces are the same. So when I went out to try it, mine looked completely different. And when you try it, when you go outside and find some rocks and put them together, they will look completely different too. Ben used little tiny pebbles, but I was lucky and I got to go to a mountain lake in Idaho, up by Sandpoint, and they had these beautiful large rocks. These are big rocks and really interesting shapes. I mean, whenever I see like a long, tall, skinny one or an interesting shape, then I always collect it because I know I'll find a use for it when it's time to make something. So we're going to make this together. I'll show you what I'm doing. And I also want to show you a trick in case you haven't seen it yet. Sorry for the jitter. My table bounces when I move things. Have you seen this stuff? This is called tack. And tack is just this, it's kind of like silly putty in a way but what people use it for is to put things together to make two things stick together um, so blue my cute little puppy dog is stepping on the table hi blue he just wants some love aren't we all like that we just want some love hi sweet boy he's a sweet boy do you mind getting on the ground <laughs> okay well while we have blue in hand i want to show you the tack so the tack is really neat stuff because you can put a little bit, I just rip off a little piece and I make a little ball and then I put that on the rock. So like here's a rock, I'll just put it on the rock like that and then I'll squish it, uh, 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 squish it onto the, the board or the paper, whatever I'm using to put the rocks on. And then it kind of holds it there and it does a pretty good job. The only downside of this stuff is if you leave the ball on the rock for a long time, then it will leave a oil stain on the rock. So I had a big old piece of this on the rock and it left the oil stain. So um, it's okay because the oil stains on the side you don't want to look at, right? Except for I accidentally had a piece of this that was in my bag with all my rocks and then it made the stain on the front of it. But it's just a rock. So when you see my little dark marks, it's from my, my tack. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did mine, and you can see all of these pictures that we're doing together. So here's the book, He is Risen, and the picture we're going to do is right here. This, um, I'll just show it up in the video, but it, all these pictures are in here, and it'll just give you some inspiration on what you might make yourself. But you'll never find any two rocks the same, so it makes every picture different, which is really part of the fun of doing rock art is that you're organizing shapes instead of making them. Like, I don't have the talent for drawing pictures because I have to create the shapes, but I do have the talent for finding shapes in nature and then putting those together. So let's do that. And then if you want to put them in a frame and put them up on the wall, you can do that too. But for now, let's just make the art.